We must move on to questions to the Minister for Enterprise, Trade and Investment, and we will start with listed questions. I call Mr. Colum Eastwood. Uh, question number one, please, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I met with uh, Shane Logan, the Chief Executive of Ulster Rugby, and Philip Brown, Chief Executive of Irish Rugby Football Union, together with the Minister for Culture, Arts and Leisure on the 15th of October 2013. I have scheduled to meet with the Irish Government Ministers Leo Varadkar and Michael Ring, along with Minister Nakulin, on the 22nd of January to discuss the hosting of the Rugby World Cup in 2023. Call Mr Eastwood for supplement. Thank you. Can I thank the Minister uh, for her answer? And can I welcome this strong cross-border uh, cooperation to deliver a very important uh, project for, for this island? And can I ask the Minister what other plans, or if she has any other plans, uh, to support further sporting events on a cross-border north-south basis? Well, first of all, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I think it would be wrong if we uh, pass this moment without congratulating the Ulster rugby team yeah. Yeah. on their tremendous victory at the weekend. Uh, many people thought uh, it was a very much an uphill struggle, but however, uh, we got there, and I do want to pay tribute uh, to all of the team and indeed many of the travelling supporters who uh, travelled to Leicester to see a tremendous victory. And of course, it means that we will have a, a home quarter-final here in Belfast, and we're very much looking forward to that. Uh, this um, coming together between ourselves and the relevant ministers in the Republic of Ireland uh, is a realisation that uh, I, neither of us would be able to host uh, the World Cup on our own. And I think that uh, in that instance, we should work together for mutual benefit in Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. I think this is a good working relationship, as I've said. We will have a further meeting uh, on Wednesday of this week uh, to develop the plans further, and I think the, the uh, call will be launched uh, not uh, uh, imminently, but in May of 2016. But we want to be ready and make sure that we have uh, all of the work uh, in place, uh, because we really do believe that, uh, given uh, our shared history and heritage in relation to rugby football, that we could really put on an excellent uh, event um, right across uh, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland for everyone here, but also to bring in uh, numerous amounts of tourists uh, into uh, Northern Ireland. So for us, uh, I see great benefit, and that's why we will work together on this event. Call Mr Phil Flanagan. I ask I thank the Minister for her answers. Um, maybe the Minister wants to send a delegation of MLAs from the Chamber to the next Rugby World Cup, and I'm sure there's some of us in here that would be willing to go. Um, when, the, when the Minister appeared before the committee, she um, made some very positive and supportive comments of um, the GEA's role in, in helping secure this bid. But can, can I ask the Minister, in an unrelated matter, um, whether her department or the Department of, of Sport in the South has considered offering any kind of um, personnel support to the IRFU to help secure this bid? Well, we're working very closely with the IRFU and from our part uh, with the Ulster branch. Uh, and can I say, given that the next Rugby World Cup is in England, I have no difficulty uh, in sending the member over to Twickenham to do some uh, uh, recce's for us uh, in relation to that. Um, but uh, yes, uh, part of the meeting on Wednesday is to look at what practical measures we have to take uh, to make sure that we are ready. Uh, I will take the member's comments on board in relation to providing support. I would imagine uh, they will want to have uh, the best people in place to make sure that we are very well set uh, to welcome this tournament to uh, the island uh, in 2023, and we will give them all the support uh, that they ask for, obviously within budgetary reason, but we believe that this will be uh, a great event for us here. Call Ms Bronwyn McGaff. The question two. My department and Invest Northern Ireland have worked closely with the full range of businesses across Northern Ireland, including, including those in the retail sector, and have met with a number of local retailer groups. A wide range of initiatives are available that offer support and guidance to local retailers. For example, Invest NI's business support team and NI Business Info provides a valuable source of business information and signposting to specialist events for retailers. Retail businesses can also avail of Invest NI's wide range of workshops and seminars. InvestNI has also supported local councils to develop programmes that are open and accessible to retail businesses. Call Ms McGahan for a supplementary. 
Speaker, I thank the Minister for her response. Um, can the Minister tell us how her department helps and supports retailers to maximise the opportunity by the internet as a place for promoting and selling goods and services? I well, thank the member for her supplementary. And indeed, um, one of the challenges that is always pointed out has been the onset of online shopping. And I have said often um, that uh, our retailers need to embrace uh, this and, and to, do, to do so in a positive way. And where local retailers can demonstrate a market opportunity online, uh, Invest Northern Ireland can provide uh, advice and guidance, uh, may be able to give financial support as well, subject to its standard intervention principles. And we've also uh, worked with the Northern Ireland Independent Retail uh, Trade Association to assist in preparing a guide uh, for its membership uh, on developing a, an online retail presence. And I understand uh, that that guide will be ready for release uh, in the first quarter of this year. So we do uh, work very closely with retailers. We provide them access to workshops. We will help them to get online if there's a market opportunity. And I think that's a recognition that we need to uh, move with the times and give as much support as we possibly can. Call Mr. Patsy McGloan. Thanks very much. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I thank the Minister for her responses in relation to this matter. Uh, could the Minister provide us with some information as to what support was given uh, through her department for Small Business Saturday, please? I don't have that information to hand, but I know personally myself I was involved in some of the uh, promotional work about, around Small Business Saturday. And as I've said, uh, if there are those small businesses who want to come forward uh, and avail of the opportunities in relation to online uh, help and support. Uh, they can also access our design clinics under the Boosting Business Programme. And you will recall that Boosting uh, Business was brought in uh, to speak really to the wider business space uh, and not just to invest in our clients. So that is all open to the wider business space and certainly to those small businesses who would have been involved in Small Business Saturday. Call Mr. Jonathan Craig. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Minister, given that a lot of our, our local businesses already are trading online, and I could think of one particular example, McCall's in Lisburn, now does the vast majority of its trading online, um, what is the Minister's department and InvestNI doing to actually promote this type of sales technique for other retailers who are struggling in some of our high streets? Well, our business advisors can call with anyone, including the retail sector, who expresses an interest in speaking to those, um, that, those people in, in, in that particular team. And as I've indicated, there are uh, online guides being developed in cooperation with NERTA. Uh, we have the opportunity to help businesses if there's a market opportunity for them online. We have workshops for them uh, to attend if they so wish as well. Uh, and so therefore we have embraced uh, the challenge, as some would say it, with online uh, shopping. I happen to think the clicks and bricks approach to try and draw people into uh, the physical shop through the internet uh, is really a good way forward because we can't avoid the fact that it's there. We have to deal with it, and I think we're addressing that through some of the programmes that we have. Call Mr. Danny Kinnahan. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker. May I thank the Minister for her answers, particularly on the online trading. I just hope we keep the Northern Ireland brand within it. But when it comes to another facet of our trading. Would, what's her assessment of the 3D colour imitation fronts to shops that are um, really doing up the centres of our villages and looking excellent, but we need to make sure that they aren't there permanently? Uh, yes, and this uh, first became uh, an issue, if you may recall, in and around the G8. Uh, at that time, uh, money was made available, I think, from the Department of Environment, possibly also from the Department of Social Development, uh, to really bring some of our uh, towns, particularly in Fermanagh, um, which had a number of uh, empty shops so that they could be attractive despite the fact that there were empty shops. I actually think it is a welcome sign. I think that when uh, companies then decide to go into the high street, 
Um, and indeed, this has happened in Enniskill, and many of them have kept uh, the paintings on their shutters so that when the shutters are down, it is quite attractive, but there's all, uh, there is a shop actually behind that during the day. So I can understand uh, why some people uh, described it as false and what have you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I happen to think it is a good way of sprucing up a town, making it look well, uh, and hopefully attracting investment into the town so then uh, the false front shops, uh, shop, shops can be taken away. Well, Mr. Stephen Agnew. For Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Question number three. The Northern Ireland Renewable Heat Incentive was launched on 1 November 2012 for the non-domestic sector. As a result, 11.5 megawatts of re new renewable heat capacity has been installed. Performance over the first 12 months of the scheme compares favourably with Great Britain. While accounting for less than 3% of the UK heat demand, the number of Northern Ireland applications equate to 6.8% of GB applications and 3.2% of accredited heat capacity. This demonstrates that Northern Ireland, the Northern Ireland scheme is punching above its weight. In addition, the performance of the Renewable Heat Premium Payment Scheme, which provides support for the domestic market, has been very positive. Through this scheme, over 11 megawatts of new renewable heat capacity has been supported. I believe the deployment of over 22 megawatts of new renewable heat capacity in the past 18 months is a good start towards achieving the executive's target of 10% renewable heat by 2020. Mr. New for supplement. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for the information. When does she anticipate the domestic rollout of RHI taking place, and will there be a renewed emphasis on the renewable heat incentive in terms of marketing to promote both the domestic and um, increase the promotion of the, the commercial uh, uh, RHI? Well, yes, uh, we hope that the domestic RHI will be uh, rolled out at the same time as the domestic RHI in, on the mainland in Great Britain, um, and that those can dovetail together. Uh, we had a consultation, and I think it was in and around 50 uh, responses were received. So we've been looking at those responses and seeing if we can ask, uh, answer any of the questions that have been raised. So that will be uh, in the near future, uh, and we hope it is as successful as the payment schemes to the domestic sector. Mr. McCree for a supplement. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Could the Minister outline, outline if businesses can avail of, a, of the Carbon Trust loan as well as getting support through the RHI? Well, yes, this was a, a subject that was causing a, a lot of concern uh, in relation to people who had availed of the Carbon Trust loan, and uh, we've been able to get clarity in relation to that issue now. And so, an installation that has availed of the Carbon Trust loan is now eligible to be considered for accreditation under the Northern Ireland Renewable Heat uh, Incentive Scheme. Uh, so where an applicant has uh, availed of uh, what's called de minimis aid, such as the Carbon Trust loan, uh, prior to making an RHI application for accreditation, uh, the RHI aid will be provided on the basis of the European Commission's de minimis regulation. So we were able to get uh, that answered. I know uh, in particular members of the committee were concerned about this because a lot of people had taken advantage of the Car uh, Carbon Trust Loan Scheme, uh, so we're pleased to have been able to provide that clarification. Well, Mr. Fergal McKinney for some. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister? And does she have any further pl plans to further improve the level of uptake of the Renewable Heat Initiative? Well, we're very uh, keen to promote the uh, Renewable Heat Initiative also alongside energy efficiency because we believe energy efficiency has to be there uh, alongside uh, the Renewable Heat uh, Scheme. Uh, and in fact, energy efficiency measures uh, can often be the most cost effective way uh, of bringing down uh, people's energy bills. Uh, so we will uh, engage uh, again in a positive uh, campaign. Uh, he may be aware of our campaign Energy Wise, which we rolled out in relation to energy efficiency. Uh, and again, we would hope that people will take up the message and get involved, because not only is it good sense, but it also reduces uh, the cost of their bills. Call Mr. Chris Hazard for a question. Keshavar Kahar, let her hold question four, please. Overall, moving jobs from one location to another is neutral as the economic gains at the destination location are offset by losses at the origin. Job dispersal can rebalance economic activity within Northern Ireland, 
the relocation of fisheries uh, jobs will move some spending power to Downpatrick, for example, passing uh, spend in local retailers and restaurants in terms of the lunchtime economy. Uh, and in the longer term, there may be some further transfer of spending power if staff relocate to live in an area. However, due to the relative ease of travel to Downpatrick, this may not be as significant as it would be in some other instances. Call Mr. Hazard for supplementary. Colonel, good last can call and I thank the Minister indeed for her response. Uh, given her response, does, does the Minister herself have any plans uh, to relocate uh, jobs or services within her own department to the Southern area or indeed any rural constituencies across the north? Come on, we'll get. I do understand that I'm uh, meeting the member and indeed a delegation uh, from Downpatrick, I think, uh, early next month in relation to this very issue. Uh, and whilst at the moment I have no plans to relocate any jobs centrally uh, in my department, uh, I do remind the member that there are a number of offices of Invest NI spread across Northern Ireland and indeed uh, the Trading Standards Service uh, have uh, jobs in our, our uh, have offices in Armagh, Ballymena, and Eskill and Londonderry as well. So there are a number of uh, uh, areas within the department, whereas the headquarters is in Belfast, they have jobs spread out across uh, Northern Ireland. So that is the case within my department. Call Mr. Gordon Dunn for supplement. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. May I thank the Minister for her answers today. Does the Minister recognise a greater role for new councils in economic development, thereby opportunities? can be developed for working closer with Invest NI? Well, I certainly hope that uh, the new councils will not only work closer with Invest NI, but also uh, with my tourism um, authorities as well, uh, and not very much as they hope, because the new tourism destinations, which we are setting up right across Northern Ireland, are something that will work uh, closely with the local council areas. And as it happens, I mean, Invest Northern Ireland already have offices across Northern Ireland and uh, they have a close working relationship with local councils and I do believe it will be strengthened uh, by RPA and uh, hopefully uh, provide a focus for partnership uh, in local economic development uh, initiatives so uh, we'll certainly be wanting to take up that challenge and I'm sure the new councillors will as well. Call Mr Tom Buchanan. You, Mr Deputy Speaker, question number five please. Just before the Minister answers the question. Can I remind members that your supplementaries must relate to OMA? Minister. Uh, through Invest Northern Ireland's engagement with the Council and uh, Department of Environment Planning, a number of potential options were identified. The organisation undertook a series of desktop studies with two locations identified as potentially suitable for development. Invest Northern Ireland has attempted to acquire land on two locations uh, in OMA. However, it has been unsuccessful in securing these. Invest NI is committed to continuing to work closely with all relevant stakeholders to secure new industrial land for OMA. Call Mr Buchanan for supplementary. Thank the Minister for her response. And the Minister will know that um, there is very little land available in OMA. Uh, giving the companies opportunities to expand, and will the Minister ensure that Invest NI, along with other stakeholders such as OMA District Council, etc., uh, redouble their efforts in an effort to locate industrial development land within the OMA area? Well, I thank the member for his supplementary, and I can feel his frustration because it's something uh, that I feel as well. We have been attempting to acquire sites uh, in the OMA area in particular. Uh, at the moment, we have 119 acres of land uh, in West Tyrone, um, but the majority of it, and I think this is a good, healthy sign, Mr Deputy Speaker, the majority of it uh, have, has been occupied by businesses, uh, leaving just 21 uh, acres, and some of that is not suitable uh, for occupation. So we do need to find uh, more land, and I want to assure the member that we will continue to work with the Council locally and also with the private sector, and indeed, if uh, uh, companies come to us at present uh, to expand or indeed come to OMA, we are pointing them in the direction of private sector holdings, of which there, uh, there are some uh, in the OMA area. So he can be assured that we're not turning away investment from OMA, we're just redirecting them uh, to the private sector. But we do accept that we need to have more industrial land in the area. Well, Mr. Barry Michael Duff. Can I thank the Minister for her answers to date and uh, for uh, been very supportive recently of the engineering sector in OMA. But could I ask the Minister, 
how close does her department work with, for example, the Department of Environment to earmark land for industrial development, for example, in OMA, where the area plan is, is really, really years out of date? that the area plan is out of date. I think it was out of date possibly when I was in the Department of Environment. Uh, and so there does need to be progress made in that respect. I do think uh, we need to work with all of the sectors, so with the Council, with the Department of Environment, uh, and indeed with the private sector to help companies who want to expand or indeed come to uh, OMA and Straban. And can I say on a positive note that when I looked at these figures in terms of uh, land available, I said, well, we've only had uh, a new park in the Straban area in the very recent past, there surely must be availability uh, in Straban, but actually Straban has little availability, and I think that's a very good sign uh, in respect of economic development in your area in West Rome. Again, before calling Mr. Pat Sheehan, can I remind members that and supplementary questions to this question must relate to West Belfast. I call Mr. Sheehan. Question six, please. Invest Northern Ireland continues to support business growth and investment in West Belfast. Uh, between the 1st of April 2011 and the 30th of September 2013, it made 350 offers of support in companies in West Belfast, with 6.2 million of support contributing to total investment in the constituency of over 42.5 million. To date, this has led to the promotion of 770 new jobs in the area. During the same period, a total of 292 business starts have also been supported in West Belfast. Last February, I also announced that Caterpillar were creating 200 new high-quality shared services jobs in West Belfast. In terms of seeking to attract further foreign investment, InvestNI is continuing to work with local stakeholders, including both the West Belfast uh, Partnership and Greater Shankill Partnership Boards to review the features and benefits of West Belfast in order to maximise opportunities for future economic growth. Mr. Sheehan for a I thank the Minister for her answer and I wonder could she advise the House on how important the link is with local councils in terms of identifying locations for potential investors. And I know the Minister touched on this point in an earlier response she made here, but could she tell the Assembly uh, just how she intends strengthening those links? Well, we have talked about, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, putting Invest Northern Ireland, not just talking about it, we did it actually up in Coleraine, we put an Invest NI uh, employee into the council offices so that they could work ever closer uh, with the council, and that was a pilot project which worked very well, and I hope that we'll be able to develop that concept uh, when RPA uh, takes sh more shape uh, after the uh, Shadow Council elections in May, uh, because obviously we're all in this same game of bringing investment into Northern Ireland and each of the local council areas will have their own particular view as to what is best uh, in their area, what's the right way to present the area and I hope that they will be able to bring that expertise to Invest Northern Ireland and in particular those people in Invest Northern Ireland who sell Northern Ireland outside of Northern Ireland, so our teams in America, our teams in the Middle East, so that they can know what it is each particular area has to offer, and I hope that the new councils will be able to do that in a very effective way. Call Mr Alex Atwood. Uh, my question has a yes or no answer. Um, given that there is currently uh, land zoned for industrial use at the former Vistian site on Finhe Road North, and given that that site has access to the northbound of the M1, is your department prepared to advise the planning service that in relation to the current planning application whereby that site would be uh, fully used or substantially used for housing, is your department prepared to advise the planning service, yes or no, that part of that land should be continued to be retained for industrial use, given the commitment that you have said you have to that part of Northern Ireland in terms of jobs growth? Well, uh, the member will know there's never a yes or a no answer, and he should know better than most that that is the case. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the situation in relation to um, land zoned for um, economic development is this, and Invest and I are very clear in relation to this issue, and this is what we will be saying. 
uh, to uh, the Minister of the Environment or indeed the Planning Department, whoever comes to us for advice. We are generally opposed to the loss of land currently our last use for industry uh, to non-industrial users. And that is our policy because We've just had a question in relation to West Tyrone about the scarcity of land for economic development and the need to find suitable sites for economic development. And therefore, we're always very slow uh, to give up land which has been zoned for economic development. And therefore, there has to be a very strong, overwhelming case for us to move away from that. And that is the position. It's not a yes or no answer, but I hope it's a helpful answer. Call Ms. Judith Cochran. And I thank the Minister for her answers thus far. Um, could the Minister give an assessment um, of the potential contribution that could be made by the E3 campus at BMC? Well, I am a great supporter of the E3 campus. Um, I think it's a tremendous uh, asset uh, to West Belfast. I've visited it on a number of occasions. I've seen the way in which they have made a difference just to those people who travel to E3 for education, but actually to the wider community that sits in and around E3 as well. So I do think that E3, uh, and I know my colleague Stephen Farry believes this as well, will continue to provide uh, a very good base uh, from which uh, employers can look to for skills, but also for potential FDI companies coming in, they always look at well, what skills are available to us and what are the higher and further education colleges like in that particular area. And I think to have E3 on your doorstep is a very important asset indeed. Call Mr Gregory Campbell. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Northern Ireland has a number of very successful private sector companies. Can the Minister update the House on one of them, which is the sale of Andor Technologies in West Belfast? Well, as the member probably is aware, an offer for the purchase of Andor PLC share capital by Oxford Instruments PLC, which is a FTSE 250 company, has been agreed with Andor's board. Andor have been a tremendous uh, asset and catalyst uh, to the particular area uh, where they sit in West Belfast, and they offer uh, to all shareholders remains open, so we can't be definitive in relation to this issue, but uh, I very much hope that whatever happens in relation to the ownership of Andor, that we will continue to have the good, positive relationship uh, between Invest Northern Ireland and Andor, which we have developed over a number of years. Indeed, I recall on my first visit to China, opening Andor's office uh, in Shanghai. So that's the sort of business we're talking about, very forward-looking, very outward-looking, and uh, we're very fortunate to have Andor as one of our companies here in Belfast. Call Mr Peter Weir for a quest. uh, question. number seven, Deputy Speaker. As of the 31st of December 2013, a total of 4,177 jobs have been created through the Jobs Fund since its launch in April 2011. This means that the Jobs Fund has now exceeded its target to create 4,000 jobs by March of 2014. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I thank the Minister for her answer, and I suppose a Northern Ireland wide answer uh, on that last issue. Um, it's very good to see that the, the Jobs Fund has surpassed its target, uh, but I wonder if the Minister could give us some examples of uh, where the Jobs Fund has been of specific benefit to companies. Well, the one thing I've always said about the Jobs Fund is they can be supporting two jobs in a, a little firm somewhere in Northern Ireland, or they can be supporting, in the biggest uh, uh, example in Stream, a thousand jobs. Uh, we've had some tremendous examples of how the Jobs Fund has made uh, a big difference to Northern Ireland and Stream Global Services, uh, 1,000 jobs supported by the Jobs Fund, uh, BT, 116 jobs, uh, Tarumo BCT, 416 jobs, and Linton Foods, of course, very important uh, because it's in Dungannon, uh, 179 uh, jobs supported through the Jobs Fund. But we've had smaller companies benefit as well, uh, Clockbane Farm Foods, 10 jobs uh, promoted, um, and indeed TES uh, NI, 70 jobs promoted. So quite a big step up for companies like TES to move to that sort of scale. So for me, the Jobs Fund has been a, a tremendous success. I'm delighted to see it passed its target for March 2014 already in January 2014. Well, Ms. Sander I thank, thank, thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her response. Um, the latest figures that I had access to, uh, Minister, were the, the jobs created 2012-2013, and I note that Mid-Ulster is the second highest 
uh, of, the, of the jobs created under the jobs fund in that period of 261, indeed evidence of the entrepreneurial spirit in Mid Ulster. Does the Minister estimate that this trend will continue in uh, the figures up until uh, most recent? Well, certainly the Jobs Fund has made a, a significant difference. I'm just looking at all of the uh, different constituencies uh, across Northern Ireland, and they're in hundreds, no matter which constituency you look at. Uh, and in respect of her own constituency in Mid-Ulster, the total jobs promoted, uh, as opposed to jobs created in Mid-Ulster alone, will total uh, 776, and that's a tremendous boost uh, for one constituency. It's uh, one of the higher uh, constituencies to gain uh, that level of jobs. So uh, congratulations to Mid-Ulster, but there are many right across Northern Ireland that are of a similar vein. Order. That ends the period for oral questions. We will now move on to 15 minutes of topical questions. And I call Mr. David McNary. Mr. McNary. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, recent uh, figures indicate that proportionally nights spent in serviced accommodation by tourists were 22% in Strangford and 26% in the Mourns, uh, compared to 89% in Belfast. I was wondering, has the Minister any information as to why there is such a disparity and what might be done? Well, one of, I don't have the detailed um, figures in front of me, and you will understand that because these are topical questions and therefore uh, I don't have any chance to prepare for the questions. But uh, one would always expect the service accommodations in uh, particularly capital cities to be higher uh, than more rural areas because uh, the self catering. Um, accommodation in more rural areas seems to be more popular uh, and that is why uh, we get uh, those figures and I don't know whether he has the self-catering figures but it would be interesting to compare and contrast the self-catering figures in somewhere like Belfast with somewhere like Strangford or Fermanagh or the Mourns so maybe that's something uh, that we can look at together uh, the self-catering figures as opposed to the service accommodation. Mr McNary for supplement. There are uh, suggestions, uh, uh, Deputy Speaker, uh, to lease Northern Ireland water land for wind farms in the Mourns. Does the Minister think that would be of benefit to attracting tourists? Well, of course, uh, I'm glad to say it's not up to me as to whether uh, such uh, uh, a planning application proceeds, uh, and I'm sure the Minister of Environment uh, will have his own particular view. Of course, when an application for wind farms or indeed any other renewable energy is made, uh, we have to take into account uh, all of the impacts that that will have and all of the benefits that that will have. And I'm sure uh, that the Minister and his planning officials will do that when they're considering uh, whether to allow such a wind farm to take place. Mr Pat Ramsey. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. In terms of the future arrangements for the Consumer Council for Northern Ireland, does the Minister foresee an enhanced or strengthened role for them? For the Consumer Council? Yes, for the Consumer Council. Yeah. Well, as the member knows, uh, the consultation in relation to that issue will soon be finished. Uh, there have been uh, a number of meetings that have taken place right across Northern Ireland. Uh, I'm looking forward to the report of those meetings and indeed all of the consultation uh, responses. I'm not sure how many responses we have through at present. And I will look at those, as I said at the time that I started the consultation, with an open mind. Um, some people don't accept that, that's fair enough, uh, but I know that I am looking at this issue with an open mind and I look forward to seeing the consultation responses. Mr Ramsey for supplement. I thank the Minister for her response, but would you, like the SDLP, acknowledge the immense contribution that the Consumer Council is, is playing across Northern Ireland in helping and assisting consumers in, in the most difficult of circumstances? Well, I will uh, recognise, and indeed I have uh, in my capacity as an MLA in Fermanagh and South Tyrone, used the Consumer Council um, to help constituents. In that, in, in that particular case, it was in relation to Northern Ireland Water and what they could do uh, to help. So I do, of course, recognise that the need for an independent advocate is something that we definitely need. But I think he would also agree with me that it is right that we review these particular organisations from time to time. Uh, we have reviewed Invest Northern Ireland. I'm in the process of reviewing the Northern Ireland Tourist Board, and we're now looking at the Consumer Council as well. It would be wrong 
not to review uh, the functions, uh, the efficiency, the effectiveness of all of our organisations which are at arm's length, uh, because otherwise where is the accountability if we uh, allow them to continue without a review? And that's what this is about, looking to see whether they are providing a service uh, at the top of their game. If not, why not, and what can we do uh, to help change that in the future? Call Mr. Leslie Cree for a topical question. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Minister, last year the number of jobs created through the Jobs Fund in North Down was 23 only. Could she explain if this is a satisfactory figure? I'm just looking at the uh, Jobs Fund uh, uh, promoted for North Down. Uh, last year, 2013, oh, well, last year would have been 2012-13, uh, was 74 promoted last year in uh, the North Down area and 60 in the year that we're currently in to date. And over the term of the Jobs Fund, it has been 164 uh, in North Down uh, promoted from uh, April of 2011. Well, Mr. Cree for supplementary. Thank you. Uh, I was asking for the number of jobs created, not promoted. Uh, but on this, following the same theme, Minister, uh, the sum of um, assistance paid for jobs created was £82,000 only last year. Is she prepared to ask her officials to take some action to improve the figures for North Down? We make offers to companies, as the member will know, uh, and that's why I talk about the numbers promoted. That's the numbers that are available to those particular firms uh, that we can help. If they decide not to grow their companies at a faster rate or they've decided to slow down the recruitment, uh, I think he would accept that there's nothing I can do to force them to increase their recru recruitment other than keep alongside them and see if there's anything else we can help them with uh, in relation to their companies. Uh, he'll recall that I uh, was down with Mango Direct uh, and they are to promote 55 jobs, but I'm not sure how many they've actually created. But I will find out for the member uh, because that was a, an excellent company. I know that they had uh, maybe accommodation difficulties insofar as they were completely full when I, I visited them, and I don't know whether that's an issue. So those are the sorts of issues that you know, may uh, prevent uh, a company from being faster in relation to their jobs fund spend. But it doesn't take away from the fact, uh, and I will get the member the figures for North Down, the up-to-date figures in creation. I don't have them with me just at present. But it doesn't take away from the fact that globally, in Northern Ireland terms, we have surpassed the programme for government target, which was quite a stretching target when one thinks about it. And we have done that uh, in January of 2014, and the target was in March of 2014. So I think we should congratulate Invest Northern Ireland for the work that they're doing in that respect. Well, Mr. David Michael Veen for a topical question. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, the Minister will be aware that Rightbus is obviously a very important employer in my constituency of North Antrim, and she will be aware that there was a, a very significant announcement made last week in relation to uh, some more contracts. I wonder would the Minister be able to respond to that particular announcement, please? Well, I very much welcome uh, this further announcement by Rightbus, hot on the heels of 600 jobs for Transport for London. Uh, we are now uh, delighted to see that there is a 301 bus order, uh, which is the lion's share of a 425 bus order for First Group. Uh, and the reason why First Group are coming to Rightbus is in relation to the innovative way in which Rightbus do business. Uh, and again, they have been able to provide a solution uh, to first group in relation to cutting down the fuel consumption uh, on the bus that they are selling uh, to first group and I think it's a tremendous endorsement of the skills, the abilities of the workforce in Right Bus and uh, we will continue to support Right Bus and indeed any other uh, company that shows such an innovative edge. Mr Michael Bean for supplementary. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and I do thank the Minister for her answer. The Minister will also be aware, I'm sure, um, that by, some, by uh, particularly one local representative in North Antrim, there has been some illogical criticism of Invest NI and how they have been conducting themselves in North Antrim. Um, I wonder would the Minister be able to advise the House as to what support Invest NI will continue to give Rightbus um, as they do move into the future? Well, we really have developed a partnership with Rightbus, uh, and uh, again, I pay tribute to the client executive, the person on the ground working with Rightbus in this particular instance and, and helping them to develop their plans. And we do remember in this house 
that it's a, a short couple of years ago when Wright Bus were in a situation where they had to lay some people off for the very first time in their history, and that was a very traumatic uh, event in the life of Wright Bus. But they uh, stepped forward, they came to us and said, well, we want to look at something new, we want to invest in research and development, we want to look at lean manufacturing, and if uh, any member has a chance to visit uh, their site, they will see that lean manufacturing uh, in place now. So they took the opportunity of a quiet time to reinvest in their company, and we have helped them uh, to do that. And I think that that is a very positive example uh, for other companies right across Northern Ireland. And indeed, can I say, in respect of this announcement, it provides a shop window uh, into Ballymena, into North Antrim, and indeed to Northern Ireland as to what can be achieved in relation to research and development and innovation. Call Mrs. Dolores Kelly for a question. Yeah, thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. Uh, Minister, be aware uh, of the job losses announced in the last few days in relation to Mayvan. I wonder, can you give us any update in relation to any actions your department uh, plans to take? I thank the member for mentioning my van because, of course, uh, that was very disappointing news uh, on Friday. I understand that most of the job losses that were announced on Friday were in relation to work outside of Northern Ireland, so contracts that were being delivered outside Northern Ireland. Uh, I've spoken to the administrator and indeed to the financial director of MyVan. They're still working very hard to try and find uh, a solution for the wider MyVan company. And of course, we will support them in any way that we can in relation to that. And I've made that very clear, whether that's from Invest Northern Ireland or from the department centrally. Mrs. Kelly for supplement. Thank you. Uh, the Minister mentioned about contracts and procurement. I wonder, Minister, on the back of the experience of Mayvan and indeed the uh, ability of small businesses to actually to uh, uh, contract for um, public sector large contracts, is there any specific measures your department is, will be taking in relation to assist companies to be uh, best placed in order to uh, win some of these contracts? Well, we do a lot of work uh, through Intertrade Ireland, actually, on procurement practices uh, in Northern Ireland for companies from the Republic of Ireland, and actually in the Republic of Ireland for companies from Northern Ireland, so that they can uh, tender across border. And I think that's probably one of the, the uh, successes of Intertrade Ireland's work, that they have that go-to-tender programme, and they hold workshops uh, across uh, the island of Ireland to allow companies to develop that. And I think they've also developed an app, if I'm not wrong, in relation uh, to public procurement. So those are very tangible, practical ways to help companies uh, to become aware of procurement opportunities. Uh, I have to say, uh, I am sure the Finance Minister will be watching this very carefully as well, particularly in relation to subcontractors and the experience that uh, there is here as well, because we do recall the very difficult experience there was in relation to patents at the time uh, that they had their difficulties uh, last year. Call Dr. Alistair MacDonald for a question. Mr. Speaker, could I ask the, the Minister will have noticed that Angela McGowan, a very reputable economist with Danske Bank, has undertaken some surveying recently, and the survey suggests that the worst is behind us. But equally, running along, and that's very good news, but running alongside it, there's a, 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 the impression that some 3,500 businesses here, small businesses, are experiencing experiencing significant financial stress and does the minister or the department have any proposals in terms of alleviating some of the crippling pressures faced by small businesses? Well, I, do very, I did have an opportunity to very briefly glance at Angela McGowan's report this morning. I, I welcome the headline, as, uh, as the member has pointed out, that consumer confidence is growing. That is something that we should all welcome, and indeed, uh, given my first substantive question today about uh, retail, it's uh, something that we very much want to engender. Uh, in relation to the second part of his question, um, this has always been an issue that there was a lag in relation to small companies who were treading water, as it were, to try and keep um, afloat uh, during the worst of the recession. Uh, I would make a plea uh, through him that if any small companies are facing those difficulties, to not leave it to the last moment to come to either uh, members uh, or indeed to uh, seek help, uh, because that's one of the features I think we've seen uh, over this past period of time that people try to manage on their own and then they seek help too late uh, to be able to do something to save their businesses. And I was down visiting uh, Mr Deputy Speaker 
the uh, debt advice line when we were talking about financial capability last Monday, and they were making me aware of the fact that they now have a business advice line uh, for sole traders and for small companies. And I think that that is something that companies could and should avail of if they find themselves in difficulties, because the worst thing to do is to put one's head under the, uh, the, the, the duvet, as it were, and, and think that nothing is going to happen. Call Dr. McDonald for Thank you very much, Minister, for that very uh, extensive answer. Uh, and I mean, moving away slightly, if you like, from small businesses, but the, the sense also coming through in the report was that uh, confidence, the rise in confidence, was linked to those in employment, whereas those in unemployment hadn't much to be confident about, and that's not entirely surprising. But is there any possibility that you might liaise with the Minister in Employment and Learning and perhaps set up some sort of workshop, task force, group, whatever, that might, might find a way of cutting our unemployment figures? Well, I, I'm not sure it's an answer to the member's question, but uh, the Dell Minister and myself will be launching later on this week the economic inactivity strategy to deal with those uh, particularly in generational unemployment, uh, uh, to try and move them away. And one of the features of that, as the member for Foyle will tell him, uh, is the fact that we're looking for some pilot projects uh, right across Northern Ireland to try and address economic inactivity. It has been with us for 30 years. We need to really grapple with it. Uh, and I'm pleased that that uh, final strategy will be announced uh, later on this week. Order. Time is up.